Our next panel, our final, our final one for the day, will talk about evaluating the impact of real estate influencers, creators, and harnessing the power of online media to guide property seekers. And I'd like to welcome back our moderator on stage, Heidi Chung, media analyst and correspondent for Variety. And our panel speakers, everybody, let's give it up for Elak Diaz, founder and leader of Light Foundation, Jet Gunther, video producer and news anchor at Tiger. We have Nelly Hrnich, creator of Nelly's Life and Making It Happen, which I also watch. <laughs> and Will Dasovich, television personality and creator. All right, I hope everyone still has their energy. We have a really fun discussion coming up, really great insights from the influencer community. Um, so as we kick off this conversation, as I like to do, can everyone just introduce themselves? Who are you and what do you do? We'll start with Elok. Uh, my name is Elok. I actually run a Litter of Light, which is a social business to help bring solar lights to rural communities. I have 6,000 followers. <laughs> That's a lot. That's six times more than me, so. Loyal ones, loyal. It's about making them count. That matters. Really. So, hi, everyone. My name is Jet. Uh, I'm a former news anchor for The Tiger. Now I'm full-time on my own YouTube channel. I do resources for expats and global citizens who are interested in doing business and buying real estate in Thailand. And uh, it's been going out pretty well so far, so I'm happy to talk about that. Hi, my name is Nelly. I'm a travel and lifestyle content creator, and I lived in the Philippines for three years. So I'm back to traveling again, you know, uh, revenge travel. <laughs> um, yeah, and I lived in Miami as well. I'm originally from Bosnia, but I grew up in Austria, so I've spent quite some time abroad, um, seen the world, and yeah, I'm happy to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Will Dasovich. I am a travel vlogger, adventure seeker, wannabe comedian, but <laughs> I fail most of the time, so if my corny jokes don't make you laugh, just forgive me. You know, it's something I'm always trying to build and do better on. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess I'm just a lifestyle influencer. I just do a ton of stuff and have a lot of fun and try and educate my viewers as, as well as try and make them laugh along with it. Wait, well, how many viewers? What's your reach? Oh, <laughs> We're jumping right questions. in. <laughs> you know what? It's more important to have, you know, there's like a, there's a quote or something that you only need 1,000 followers um, to, to become rich or make an impact because it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. I'm just looking out for my boy Elok over here. But yeah, across YouTube and Facebook and whatever, it's like seven, seven million something. Okay, not bragging or anything. All right, so I, I, let's I, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I just wanted to put you on the spot. All right, so let's start big picture here. What the heck is influence, right? In this day and age, there are a lot of folks out there that want to be influencers. They want to be a content creator. But to each of you, what does influencing actually mean? Well, uh, I, I'm here because uh, I, I needed something to be able to uh, use the influence, or, or I call it the conversion rate now. So uh, the reach, the number of people that see you, and although I'm not an influencer, I ask influencer to share some of their power and reach uh, to be able to get people to, to convert that into a, you know, to, to help people. And, you know, and next thing I knew is people were actually so kind some of them get paid, but they had success, but they brought along other people with their success. And that's the best kind of influence or influence for good. So that's why, uh, although I had 6,000, I was able to reach 7 million because of the kindness of people that use their influence for good. Anyone else jump in? Um, for me, influencing, I mean, I, I personally hate the term influencer. Um, I'm a content creator, I would say, I just document my travels and my life, and through community building, I establish trust within my community, and that's how I influence them, by just you know, having my own integrity and just doing this, the things that I personally love, and that's what uh, I see as influence. I think this, in this day and age, influence is building a 
long-lasting, valuable relationship with the audience, right? Because they see you on camera and you have an opportunity to connect with people from around the world. There's two and a half billion people on YouTube and how the algorithm works nowadays is if you create content, it will be shown in front of the people that matter. But, but a lot of people do squander this opportunity because they instantly try to hard sell people, right? Instead of trying to give value upfront and being authentic. I think a lot of the successful influencers out here, and I, such as the, you guys on this stage, you put yourself out there in an authentic way. You're not afraid to showcase all your quirks and your flaws. And with that, you build a relationship with the, with the audience. They feel like they're listening to a real human being and you create a relationship with them throughout time. And with that comes likability and with likability comes trust. And they trust what you say. And more importantly for real estate and this agenda is they trust your recommendations, whether it's buying a product. That being said, if you betray their trust or in, in some way, that trust is instantly gone. So influence is carefully built, carefully nur nurtured, but it can easily go away if you abuse it too. And then you just make an apology video. You say you're sorry, and then everyone forgives you, and life goes on, because I've been through that. You know? No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> kind of. Um, no, but I think influence, I think influence for me is just being able to make an impact on a viewer and make them, uh, I guess, be able to change the way they think, you know, and, and be able to, like, make a decision um, based on kind of, um, the learnings from, from what you, you provide them. Yeah, Will and I had this conversation earlier on where we talked about real estate in general and how like these real estate channels are really popping up and getting a lot of views and you only see the polished version. So it's, I don't know if anybody knows, but there is this YouTuber from the US called uh, Eric Conover. So he does these penthouse uh, viewings. Uh, $50 million dollar condo in New York City, $20 million dollar house in LA. Yeah, just super luxury, which gets a ton of views. Yeah, but then you don't really know anything about the property, nothing about your own pref preferences, not about the flaws of the property. So that's where I think we as creators also step in and say, okay, I really like this, but I don't really like that corner over there. Um, I don't like the location. I would like to have a balcony. And what's about this floor? Like, I was complaining a lot about the flooring in the condo that I got. So, you know, people are just getting very engaged. And they're like, Nelly, it's fine. The floor is new. Don't change it. But I'm like, no, but that's my preference. Like, I would like to change that. And people get to know you through that. And they see, OK, this property is not perfect, but she still went for it because she likes this and that and that. But I also point out the flaws, right? And that's the authenticity that you mentioned. Yeah, and you know, I guess when, when you're trying to be an influencer and gain followers and, and build your business as a, a public figure, you know, there always is that dichotomy of building followers, which is money, but then also building influence to be able to convert them. And, and going back to what you're saying, um, with this luxury type of real estate, you can grow a huge audience through virality, through one minute TikToks and Instagram, because that's where it performs. But if you really want to convert into sales um, and, and have people trust you and everything, then you need longer format um, type of content, which is th the easiest way to do, this, that, do that is through vlogs, where, where you have 15, 20, or even 30 minutes nowadays. I mean, my content keeps getting longer and longer, because once, once you build a fan base, they trust you and they stick around to listen to what you have to say, and that's when you can kind of interject these learnings while also keeping it entertaining in between, and yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into trying to retain the audience attention with your with your stupid corny jokes like I do, but then interjecting education and, and having them learn. Because if you try and go 100% education, it might be boring and then they click away. So. Yeah, and we also had that hard selling point. And I think something that people can relate to is life stories, right? I think we had a very similar approach with the properties that we looked at and presented on our YouTube channels where people can relate to. We were both out to look for a condo that we want to purchase for ourselves, right? Yeah, and, and we, didn't, we didn't build our brand as real estate people. We started out as just kids traveling the world. That's, what, that's how, it, how it started. 
It went from kids traveling the world to want to be comedian to podcaster having long discussions. Um, but then, you know, it evolved at this point in our life where, where our life is evolving, um, where now we're investing our money in, into real estate and really, you know, yeah. doing stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting I think world. that's why people resonate because you're really coming from an authentic place. You're not, because people nowadays, they, they're, they're jaded. They can see a sales video a millisecond as soon as it comes up, right? So as soon... So they're, they're fed up with that, they click away. But if you talk about a place, you talk about the pros and cons, I don't like this part, this part could be uh, adopted a bit more. They, they connect with that, they realize that you're going through a process of buying and vetting the place too. You're not just trying to sell this place in, yeah. with its entire as is, right? So there's that credibility that you built up here. There's the authenticity where you are going through this process of critiquing the, the place with them as well. And people really resonate with that. To so, build on that, to build on that really quickly. Sorry, we're vloggers. We can talk for days. I want him. We're the last panel too, here. Okay? Who else is going to follow us? I'm sorry. You should have got us for an hour. I'm a podcaster I'm about to cut now you off too. <laughs> so we should have had two hours. Now go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm then I'm going to bring him in. But finish that thought. Yeah. I, so I don't try and pretend I know everything. And this is also. I think what helps convert and what, what helps people like really trust you is because I go in just asking questions. What is this? What, is, what does that mean? Um, I don't like this. Do, what is, is this nice? You know, and then I think a lot of your viewers uh, are, are just like you. They don't know that much. So, so they learn with you asking questions and, and I'm not trying to pretend that I know everything. So. Elok, obviously you do very, very important work with your foundation and you leverage influencer marketing to work on campaigns such as hashtag light it forward. So tell us how you are leveraging that and using that to your advantage to help promote your foundation. So very interesting. And I, I want to uh, tell about the story of uh, working with Kelly. And I didn't even know who she was, but uh, to, to give you an idea of, of how powerful it is. But I, I come, you know, I teach people how to build solar lights uh, in their rural areas. And, uh, the, the working model is if they cannot prepare it with a simple screwdriver, uh, that it's not a tech that can be maintained. They must be able to buy it. Uh, stuck at home during COVID, uh, one of the things that I did was I was watching this film called Light it, uh, Pay It Forward. So basically, we put everything in bags and uh, challenged people to have I'll help you, I'll help you. like uh, 30 minutes to, to build a solar light. So everything was uh, buildable, uh, you know, with simple circuits, but they had to build it. And so I challenged my cousins, and my cousins uh, gave me 30 minutes of their time to build a light. Then they challenged other people. Anyway, from what I thought would be something in my backyard, uh, ended up to be, you know, uh, 10,000 people uh, ordering kits and then, you know, building a solar light. And I was uh, bringing this to villages that didn't have light. Now, interesting is uh, to show the power of the people, I built one of the largest flags, solar flags in Luneta Park. You know, when I hit 3,000 people that built it by hand. Uh, and Kelly uh, passed by and she took, uh, you know, I didn't know, she took uh, a vlog off it. And next thing I know, I had, you know, another 1,000 people order kits. But more than that is IKEA started ordering 2,000, Salesforce started ordering. It's like, I would never have thought that something from my backyard. And so, you know, uh, now we are in Italy, uh, we are in uh, United Arab Emirates, and we're just asking people, hey, can you take 30 minutes and can you vlog? And it's reaching like really record. So we just crossed our 45,000th person to build the solar lights. Nobody will donate a solar light, but everybody wants to make a solar light, show it off, and challenge other people. So it's become very, so you could check it out at uh, lightitforward.ph. So it's something where the influencer lends me their, I, I mean, I'm not even good at dancing TikTok, but <laughs> someone like Kelly would show up, not even tell me about it, take a vlog, and next thing you know, she lights up a Mangyan community, I think five villages, by just giving me the power of her influence for a while. So 
converting entertainment and you know uh, into something where it does impact on society is something that I'm very interested to talk to influencers. Can you be successful and can you help people while you're successful with your fame, with your power, with your reach? Can you lend it to us and not ask us to you know, pay impossible fees? And that's what she did. And up to today, those villages are lit and who knows how many thousands of lives she's helped. So, yes, everyone out of applause. <laughs> So I cover Hollywood and entertainment back in the US and a conversation that we have a lot is that, you know, being an actor back in the day in Hollywood meant you had the largest reach. You were a celebrity, right? But content creators, I have to be honest with you, I think you are all bigger celebrities probably than Hollywood actors at this point, to a, to a large extent. I don't know how it works here in APAC specifically. Chet, what do you, you disagree with me? <laughs> Not really, no, go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, content creation is an extremely, extremely difficult career. Um, a lot of people out there that think agree with. Instagram, creations for YouTube, all these different platforms require different work, different editing, different audiences. So how are you all working through all of that? How are you creating content for all these different platforms? Now there's TikTok. TikTok, obviously the biggest one right now, but how are you creating for all these different platforms all the time. Wow. <laughs> I think Will uh, said earlier on, it's a full-time job and a half. Yeah. It's a lot. It's, it just keeps you very, very busy and you also have to put into consideration, okay, who is my audience, uh, which platform am I posting this on, and you just kind of like adapt and try also to outsource a little bit. So you. Af like after getting bigger, of course, you outsource uh, your workload as well. So yeah, I think it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yes, yeah, especially us, because we came from the daily vlogging era where, uh, you know, where we uploaded, edited, produced, did everything, our own videos every single day with, with virtually no help. Um, I'm reading this new book by David Goggins that just got released yesterday. The guy's just an insane maniac. Um, but, you know, I guess what it just comes down to is like you, you as long as you're passionate about something and, and have this drive, then, then you can do anything. I, I don't really know what drives me. That's something I have to keep asking myself um, day in and day out. But, uh, I mean, at, at this point, I just really enjoy what I do, you know. I just, like a, a couple of weeks ago, I was bungee jumping, jumping out of planes, jumping off of bridges. Um, and yeah, I just like live for the thrill and I guess you also do it for, you know what it is, actually this isn't something, starting off you have zero followers, you don't have a community and then I'm like remembering as I, as I talk about it right now, um, once you build a community, you start to realize you're making an impact on, on people's lives and, and that's where the influence comes in um, and then as you're, as you're making change in these people's lives, they, they start to like rely on you. They need, they need you for motivation. They need you for inspiration. So it's, it's like a beautiful burden that you have to produce to keep this happiness train going, to, to keep your viewers inspired and everything. So yeah, you, you do it for your community because they end up relying on you. But um, I have a question is, I don't know how, how people do this with like a family and kids because you know, I'm a, I'm a fairly, I'm a wannabe young single guy, so I don't have to, you know, raise a family. But, but that's pretty crazy too, you know? Yeah, I've definitely had relationships suffer as a result of putting your, you know, Same. dedicating for this. I, 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 I agree, I think you really need to love the process. I think you need to enjoy iterating, experimenting, getting feedback, and constantly improving, right? Bec and I think also what matters, and I think this is the reason why a lot of people quit, is that small successes matter a lot too, right? Because some people, they have a goal of reaching a million subscribers and that's their goal and I'm never gonna, I'm a failure if I don't get there. But I think small, yeah. small wins count too. I think maybe I'm a little bit of a, a different channel from you guys because I, I focus more on information more. So I, I kind of run it like a business. So a lot of my content is centered around uh, appealing to active buyers who are actually looking to do business in Thailand, buy real estate and all like that. So I am doing product reviews. And so I, I am not necessarily basing it on building the community or engagement, but on hard sales numbers. And if 
the numbers grow each, each time, even though I, I don't have that many followers, that for me is a marker of success too. So I think it depends on what kind of goals you set for yourself um, and incrementally, so, so it keeps you motivated like that too. But I, I, do, I do think that you really need to genuinely love the process. And I think you also don't realize the, the lifestyle that it puts you in until you're in it because it's completely unusual, quirky schedule there's no such thing as five o'clock and you're done. It's like full on all the time. It's constantly in your head. You're checking the analytics all the time. And you, know, you just need to make a decision that that's the kind of lifestyle you love. And I, I love it. I've, I've been doing this and, and I've left all my full-time employments and I've gone full-time YouTube very recently because it's, it's what I wish I, I, I've always wanted to do. I think same, yeah. I mean, super simplicity is I just wanted to be able to travel the world for free. That, that, that's really, that was my goal on day one, not even get paid. Um, yeah, so just being here and being able to be in Bangkok and, and eat the food for free, and like, like this is great. <laughs> this is my peak happiness in life. Now I get to get paid to, to have this job, right? So I always just go back to, to who I was when I first started out, when I was doing everything for free. Um, I just love traveling. One of the things, though, that uh, people will come up to is, you know, the broader sense of leadership. Uh, there was a time where, you know, you put in a, a, a certain amount of minimum effort and, you know, get, you get maximum gain. I mean, this was gain. This is the economics. But they found out that, you know, so what about society and so what about the environment? But people cannot see with so much power and influence without giving back. There's a certain human-to-human -human part where they're saying, so what is he doing with the power that we give him? And this goes for elected officials as well as influencers as well as the ordinary guy, which is you cannot have it all without giving back. And so this is where the, you know, this is where the linchpin happened, is at the point that people see that you're becoming too selfish or they're giving you so much power without recognizing that you, know, you can make the world a little bit better. Because at the end of it all, people feel that you can do, leave the world in a better place. And so I try to talk to the influencers and say, look, there is a certain point here where you have to start also using your influence to give back. And if you fail to do that, there will come a time where people will you know, look at you as somebody who is also you know, uh, careless uh, with the temp, it's actually temporary, the temporary, you know, temporary power that you're given. So uh, I think for our work, uh, which is trying to get influencers to use their power for good, uh, it's starting to, to work out. Some of them have difficulty thinking that, you know, there should be something given back monetarily. But sometimes they realize by doing good, they're actually becoming more uh, influential uh, in a human way. So everything ends up in a very human return on influence, if you want to call it. That was deep, Elok. I mean, I want to get your responses to that, right? As people with such great reach, how are you thinking about giving back to the communities that you're reaching, right? It, it's something that I'm sure a lot of us here in the audience think about too, not just influencers or content creators. So, you know, looking ahead, um, further down in your careers, is that something you're thinking about constantly? I think I think about that already, even though being a small channel, because w being able to get the attention of people around the world is a huge privilege. And it's a responsibility to, be not, take, to not to be taken lightly. And so whenever I talk about something at the moment, I'm talking about Thailand, how it is doing business here, buying a condo here. I am trying to paint a fair picture of the country and I, I hope that when I, when I attract people to Thailand, I am raising the economic wellness of the whole, whole country. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I try to really make sure that I really am give, giving value to, to people. It may not be in terms of like a charity event at the moment, but actual economic value, income, investment coming into the country that, that raises the, the whole awareness and prosperity of, of everyone. Um, I, for my part, have to say that I had no idea how much of an impact my vlog would have 
on your business, for example, that is also a sort of giving back. Because he didn't ask me to go there. He didn't pay me to go there. I was just, I met Brian, who is the owner of Bam Bike, founder, um, and he said, hey, there's a cool event happening at Rizal Park. Do you want to come and blog? I'm like, yeah, sure. Went there, did a blog on it, entertained a lot of people. I always get a lot of messages of people saying, thank you so much for doing these kind of vlogs. It puts a smile on my face, and it got me through chemo. And these messages are just hitting you really hard. And you have this awareness of how much more impact you have on other people. That's also some sort of like giving back. Uh, besides, you know, just promoting uh, businesses or showing new places. Yeah, I think that's something that we can relate to. I think at the end of the day, all we want to do as human beings, not just content creators, is be able to make an impact on the world, be able to make an impact on someone's life. Um, and I found out really early in my time as a vlogger that it, it's true what they say, it gets lonely at the top. I, was, uh, I started vlogging at a time when no one even knew what the word vlogging was, so I started becoming successful, starting to make money, get famous, all that like whatever, you know, superficial, cool stuff. Um, and it didn't make me happy. And I, it only started to make me happy once I was able to share my success with my friends, with my viewers, and, and really feel like I was making a difference. So I, I really believe 99% of the population at least are, we're just human beings, we're empathetic, we care about one another. Um, and as long as you're not a sociopath, then you will get sad if you're not making an impact on someone's life. So just having that understanding will force you to make people, other people happy or help out in, in whatever way possible. I, I still remember when you jumped into the, the dirty lake of Pasig, the Pasig River to make, an, to make a statement. No, so this is lake, uh, uh, this is river that so many people rely on. He jumps into it to show how dirty it is and like, okay. Can that, we pull that up? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Wait, I, okay, so I, I jumped into the Pasig River of the Philippines. This is the dirtiest, one of the dirtiest rivers in the world, I think. It's basically like the Ganges River of India, but in the Philippines. So it's very, very dangerous. Um, but I did it because I knew it would go viral, not because I'm stupid, but because I was making a video for the... Um, uh, Piso para sa Pasig. Donate a the peso. WWF, I think yeah, it was. Yeah. Donate yeah. a peso to make the river better. So it was for a good cause. It was to promote sustainability and, and kind of show, you know, how, how terrible things are in certain areas and that we need to focus on. You, uh, you did have some oil when you stepped out. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually got sick. I got like the flu for a couple days after getting out of it. But it, it was well worth it because it went super viral and I, I think it, it allowed people to donate a ton of money and, and yeah, make change in the world. So I, I, I took a little hit for myself for the better of, you know, Okay, I, Earth. I don't rem recommend anyone doing that. I, but I wouldn't either, and I was uh, young. I was young, you I know, will I say, 25. thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a perfect way to ba wrap Bangkok, up. Bangkok has, uh, has an invite for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah let me know if you have a dirty river in Bangkok. I know okay, a few yeah. canals for All you. All right, do not recommend. Yeah. Let, let's think about that first. find my youth again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to wrap this up. We did run out of time, but that was the perfect way to end this conversation, but also the event, because... I mean, not the event, the panel. Um, I want everyone to think about that, giving back and making sure you're using your reach and your influence for good things. So my thanks to this amazing panel. Thank you for bringing the energy and all the great insights. And thank you, everyone, for sticking around for this lovely panel and this event. We'll see you later. Thank you.